Welcome back once again for another SnowRunner truck review. Today, because of so many requests for Scout vehicle reviews, we will be looking at all of the 4x4 Scouts in the game. Scouts haven't been the most popular due to terrain difficulty, but nevertheless, there are some really interesting features this class can bring to the table. So before we start, I must cover some very important things to consider and keep in mind throughout this review. Also, please consider liking and subscribing and sharing the video as well. All right, let's jump into this and check these trucks out. A few very important things to consider and keep in mind throughout this review are as follows. Number one, the Chevrolet CK1500, the International Lodestar 1700, and the Ford F750 will not be in this video because I have already reviewed them, so if you'd like to see more, please go check them out on my page. Also, the 6x6 and 8x8 Scouts will be grouped together in another video when we get that all new 6x6 Scout that is coming soon. Number two, balance is important, yet the strength of the Scouts is the second and third chance ability with the autonomous winch, so keep in mind to stay around trees. Number three, simply put, most Scouts are really light in weight. Also, their weights don't seem to affect their grip in a positive way like the larger trucks do, and this is due to less surface area and width on the tires except a few of the heavier Scouts. This knowledge makes tire size, gear manipulation, and activation of differential locking and all-wheel drive very important. Number four, it's undeniable that the Scouts have trouble in the wilds of SnowRunner. This has led to the Scout class being power crept by off-road vehicles that can do the job better than most Scouts, but not all. Number five, some but not all the vehicles will have add-ons that will inhibit trailer hauling attachments and some cannot haul trailers at all. Number six, Scouts will very rarely be power starved. Evidence of that is tire lockups and the occurrence of that is very few and far between. Lesser engines will do the job sufficiently, yet as we explained earlier a few lines up, grip is the main issue on Scouts. And finally, at number 7, these vehicles are very similar, with some differentiating themselves, but instead of giving the normal pros and cons list for every Scout, which would be very redundant, we will go over each vehicle in detail with a more informal fashion. So after those seven important things to consider and keep in mind throughout this review, let's get started, shall we? Okay, so moving right into this review, I have five scouts here lined up. So what I'll do is a five scout basis and then we'll switch up and I'll restock these with um, other scouts and then we'll start the new portion of the video. But right now we have the Scout 800 starting off. We have the Land Rover Defender 90, the Land Rover Defender 110, the Jeep CJ7 Renegade, and the Jeep Wrangler sitting here in the garage. These five vehicles will be first up and uh, jumping right into it, the Scout 800. So this is a vehicle you get very early on in the game, uh, actually in Black River. It has an engine power of 50,000. It weighs 3.1 tons. Its max tire size can be 39 inches with race suspension upgrades. Uh, keep in mind that you do need a race suspension upgrade to access those larger tires. We'll talk about the, uh, the pros and cons of that a little bit uh, later. And then it has 72 liters and that equates to 20 gallons of fuel. And then lastly, it has a roof rack um, that is quite huge uh, for this vehicle size only lacks in comparison to vehicles like um, the apache or the ford f750 so very large roof rack here with 300 repairs four spare tires including the one that's in the trunk so that'll be five and then you actually have almost two full phillips of fuel on top of your roof rack so you have 20 gallons in your tank and then 37 gallons on your roof so that's almost two times that you can fill up this uh this vehicle so pretty darn good when it comes to range okay so it has the standard gearboxes um the freeway the stock fine tune and then the SnowRunner gearbox. I usually always take the SnowRunner gearbox especially um for scouts because at faster speeds, they're just a little bit squirrely, especially 
this one right here. Um, you do get the race suspension, like I did say. Um, all of these do have the autonomous winch. This is a winch that's operated off battery power. When the engine's off, you can actually uh, restart and uh, get your winch out to r upright you on your wheels to start your engine. So you definitely always want to have this on, and that's always moving forward. Okay, so like I said, that spare wheel is in the trunk. It does have a pretty good uh, tall facing snorkel there. You want the taller one. And then overall, this vehicle is, um, it's definitely a little bit squirrely going down roads, um, a little bit bouncy as well with that new engine that it just got here. It used to have uh, this engine here, and then it recently got a little bit more power. Um, it does weigh 3.1 tons, which is a little bit more than these other 4x4 Scouts, so that is a good thing. However, if you are concerned about balance, you probably are going to want to drop your suspension down and use a smaller tire. Um, however, this can kind of go with your play style and your experience. I'm gonna give you my experience. I started my hardcore mode off that I'm currently playing, and instead of using the CK1500 like I usually do, I decided, hey, I'm gonna use the Scout 800, and even on stream, people were just uh, calling me out, asking me what I'm doing, what was I thinking, and, uh, you know, I started off doing the King of the Hill mission up there in Black River, and it just takes uh, attention to detail whenever you're driving this thing, and it's balanced because it is very bouncy. It's not very good at fast paces. Um, having these large tires like this will help going through those thicker areas. And another thing I do want to say about this is probably one of my favorite things is it has always on differential locking, and this is something I use a lot in um, my early scouting in Michigan and even in Alaska because what I would do is this vehicle can start to use a little bit more fuel especially when everything's toggled on and you're in thick conditions it does have a lot of uh, range despite having a little bit elevated burn values for a scout it's kind of on and off sporadic at most uh, what I love about this is like the dream setup for me is the switchable all-wheel drive and the always on diff locks so what I'll do is if I'm not really having trouble going down trails I will switch off all-wheel drive and allow my back tires just to burn with the always on um, differential locking because it's not going to damage my gearbox so anyways that is the scout 800 we're going to move on here and talk about the Land Rover Defender 90 Moving on here to the Land Rover Defender 90 and the Defender 110 a little bit after this. First off, the Land Rover Defender 90, um, let's just jump right in here. The Land Rover Defender 90 has the HET 8V62 Tango engine. This actually boasts 120,000 torque rating. It is the same amount of torque rating as the, the big engine in the Ford F750, so you have a ton of power here. Even with all these lesser engines, as you can see, the S Plus is just stuck right there to that little bar. So you're never gonna have uh, any type of power issues. That's the thing with Scouts. They're so light that all these engine options are pretty darn good. You'll never really see any wheel lockups. To be quite honest, I've never seen a, a Scout um, a Scout's wheels lock up when pulling something. Usually what happens in, is it'll just wheel spin um, into the ground because it just lacks grip and width on tires. So you definitely have the power here. Okay, moving on. Standard gearboxes. I usually use the SnowRunner gearbox because using Scouts, you kind of want to go at a little bit slower of a pace, especially Scouts that have short wheelbases like this one here. It's just hard to keep in line going down fast trails, um, especially at speed. So I, I like the little bit of a slower gameplay. You can get the race suspension as well. Um, and I do recommend you do so. It does have the Land Rover tires that come stock with the vehicle. You can throw these on. However, they don't have the 33 inch version of them. So um, I just chose to jump up uh, in some clearance and grab the 33 uh, MS ones uh, for this vehicle. As you can see, it also has the, the chained option if you want that. Autonomous winch, standard, all scouts. You definitely want the autonomous winch. Um, it has the engageable features for all-wheel drive and differential locking, has the spare wheel on the back. Um, just be aware that this could or could not um, impede your ability to tow a trailer. 
Um, some vehicles do, some vehicles don't. That's just the, the way it is with scouts. So you kind of want to keep an eye on that. But I will tell you about scouts that, that um, actually get hung up and can't do that stuff. So it has the short uh, round cap here. This is the one I actually like. Then there's the other one that sits a little bit higher, but not too much height. I just kind of like how it blends in. So pretty much either of these are going to be a good option here. Anyways, like I said, it has 120,000 torque rating. It weighs 1.9 tons, has 33 inch uh, mud tires that you can get. Its fuel tank is 80 liters, equating to 20 ga 22 gallons of fuel. Excuse me on that one. Like I said, it has one tire that you can put on the back just in case you blow a tire. Its roof rack actually has 150 repair points. So it's half the value of the Scout 800 that we just pre previously saw. However, it does have a, a fuel tank um, on top that you can fully fuel this vehicle up and it actually does have some pretty good range its uh, fuel burn is is pretty good as well um, something I like about this max power actually drove this a lot more than I did on our co-op mode in Tennessee we both chose to drive uh, both these vehicles I chose the 110 he chose the Defender 90 and we kind of compared and contrasted um, as we completely scouted out that map and as you know Tennessee is bumpy it's rocky up in those those hilly areas and then it's real boggy down in the other areas and we found that um, his vehicle was going through things better and as a, as a whole and I believe why it was is just simply due to larger tires better ground clearance and that's basically it because these two vehicles other than that are very similar other than the Defender 90 having more weight down low and also more weight in general but I don't think weight uh, really affects traction on scouts the way it does larger trucks just because the way the tires are and other things like that so I'm not going to get into detail with that but anyways I do think the Defender 90 is probably going to get the nod uh, in performance over the 110 and this has been cross-checked by sd1 a good friend of max powers and i he's another youtuber as well and he's done some studies on this and we've talked about this as well so now we're going to jump over here and talk about the land rover defender 110 being a newer scout here the land rover defender 110 is the uh the successor of the defender 90 it's a newer version as you can see um sits a little lower kind of looks uh, very modern as you as you can see on the screen here anyways let's jump in here and talk about this vehicle and something you're gonna realize here is these two vehicles are very very alike um, i will note some things that are different and uh as we go along so we have the Het 8V62 Tango, 120,000 torque rating. It does weigh 2.6 tons compared to the Defender 90, which weighs 1.9 tons. Um, standard gearbox is here. I always choose the SnowRunner gearbox because of the switchable features and the slower paced gameplay. However, this vehicle at speed did, actually did not act as squirrely as I thought it would. Um, Usually scouts, it's really hard to keep them in line on really light terrain or roads, but this one wasn't as bad. Um, so that is, I, I wouldn't say it's a safe bet because of that. I just say it's a little bit less, less squirrely than some of the other ones like the uh, the Scout 800, the Gore by 4, and other those other those uh, other scouts as well. Moving on here, it does have the 31 inch Land Rover tires um, that come stock with it. They're decent tires to start out with, but however, you're going to want to bump your suspension up and get these 32 inch tires. These are super small. It's brother, the Defender 90 has 33 inch tires. These have 32. They both are relatively smaller tires. Even though the Defender 90 has better clearance, this one does not. Uh, I thought this to be a huge downside um, because I was dragging myself, my frame around a little bit, but. Um, Overall, I do think this, this Scout is pretty darn good, pretty stable as well. So it has a spare wheel on the back as well, so you want, want to keep an eye on that. If it impedes on its ability to all trailers, I don't think I had any problems. It does have the short round cap, and it kind of stays flush on the vehicle here. I kind of like this a lot, that it comes all the way up here to the top of the cabin, so definitely can go through some stuff. Um, it has repair points 150 fuel tank is is uh, 27 a 22 gallon fuel tank on itself that equates to 80 liters of fuel and overall this vehicle does weigh more than its brother the defender 90 
Um, I think it has a wider gate, surely you can see it does. So for stability wise, I do think it's a little bit better in my opinion. Um, however, I didn't think that the Defender 90 had any type of stability concerns, especially with the roof racks, but that's just something that you're gonna have to keep your eye on. Um, just scouts in general, going over bumpy terrain, you're gonna get thrown off balance, but that is the best thing about it is you have the autonomous winch to save you, give you that second, third, and fourth chance. So whenever you're scouting, as a rule of thumb, stick close to some type of trees, vegetation, stuff like that, um, depending on what scout you're in. But as a, a rule of thumb, just stick close to those things. All right, now it's time to move over and talk about the Jeep CJ7 Renegade. Let's get into this. These last two trucks you're seeing sitting here, the Jeep Wrangler and the CJ7 Renegade, these were two other trucks that Max Power and I used on our All-American Challenge Mode um, that is on YouTube, is on Twitch as well. Uh, we are going to continue it in the new phase on Phase 8. We're just, right now we're kind of brainstorming with the rules that we're going to start. But anyways, we used these two scouts to do, the sc to do all the scouting for us. And I chose the Renegade and we'll jump in here and talk about this um, a little bit further. Now, the Renegade has the HET 6V 5.0. This is the top engine it gets. It has 50,000 torque rating. As you can see, it gets B plus on the power to weight. However, I don't think this is a bad thing. Um, you're always gonna have wheel spin issues with these lighter scouts. That's just how it is. Um, I never had wheel lockups with this. It's gonna go pretty darn good and get up the speed. However, you're not gonna wanna get up the speed because it gets squirrely driving down um, fast roads. And you'll probably see that in the video, it's just hard to keep online. I'm constantly looking at my, my front tires to try to keep them in line. And if you know I get jarred off balance, I'm trying to steer into where it jarred me off balance to regain balance. So uh, overall, I don't think this is a tippy vehicle. It actually is pretty good at slow paces. Um, like all trucks, if you go slow, you're gonna be okay. And also you are a scout. Stay close to trees, like I always say. Anyways, this has 50,000 torque rating. The gearbox, you always use the standard um, SnowRunner gearbox because of the switchable features as well. Um, you just have the the three low gears that you can actually have, you know, monitor your wheel spin to lower, which you do have to do a lot in these, um, these scouts. For the suspension, always go with the raise because you get 28 inch tires. Um, and they do get the Jeep tires, the OJ ones. They do look kind of cool, but you're definitely gonna wanna have the larger tires for this thing. 31 inches is pretty darn small, especially um, for scouts. And uh, yeah, you're just gonna wanna have that because this doesn't have um, a lot of ground clearance. This is actually one of the smaller scouts in the game as well. Okay, so it has the, uh, the front facing snorkel or the tall. I actually have to put the tall snorkel on there because it's just a little bit farther up and gives you a little bit more clearance. Um, I think if you go anywhere near getting this close, this deep in, in a river, you're probably gonna get washed away because this thing weighs 1.9 tons, um, also has a fuel tank of 75 gallons, that is 20, or 75 liters, that is 20 gallons of fuel. My mistake there. Um, then it has a roof rack supplies. This gives you 150 uh, spare parts that you can repair yourself. Pretty good and also 16 gallons um, equating to 60 liters of fuel on your roof. And then um, also you can put that, I believe there's a tire that's always on the back of this thing. So you will have uh, one spare tire as well. So the what my thoughts on the Renegade, I believe it's an okay scout. It definitely does struggle. Um, I found it a challenge. Um, I didn't think it was too bad. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, however, my counterpart, Max Power, um, he was in the Wrangler and he definitely had a much easier time just because the Wrangler is just overall a better scout. However, I, I think it's I think if you want to challenge, this is a this is a good scout to use, but I don't think it's um if you don't want to challenge, you want to get through things easier, you're probably going to want to step over here to my right hand side and look at the Jeep Wrangler. So let's talk about this one. Okay, so to close out the first five lineup of scouts here, we have the Jeep Wrangler. Uh, 
just as mentioned when we were talking about the Jeep Renegade, we'll dive into this a little bit further, but something just to note is the Jeep Wrangler basically has everything the, Re the Jeep Renegade has, but a little bit bigger. And also there are some special things about this vehicle as well, which we will talk about, but let's dive in here. Let's check it out. First, it has the HET 8V62 Tango engine. This gets 120,000 torque rating. As mentioned previously, it is the same amount of torque as the F750's engine, uh, the top engine that you find, um, its newest engine. And also this vehicle weighs 2.2 tons, outweighing the Renegade um, by 0.3 tons. Its tire size is 36 inches, opposed to the Renegade's 31 has a bigger fuel tank at 80 liters equating to 22 gallons opposed to the renegade's 75 liters and that was 20 gallons um, however there are some things that uh the renegade does have and that's the roof rack it just has more fuel the Ren the wrangler has more uh, spare tires and so there is a little bit of a trade-off however they they both are pretty good with fuel yet sometimes I have found, and this is when I was playing with max power, that the Renegade was burning a little bit more fuel than I expected, especially in rough areas. However, when I was just testing here a minute ago, those values weren't really that high, but I think they probably would put be put in a more of a sporadic play. So I would say its burn is a little bit sporadic at most. Um, you might have a different, a different view on that pending uh, your trials, but as, as seen in my gameplay and my test, these, this vehicle can start to burn a little bit more than I would like. And then sometimes it's just uh, nominal. So getting back to the Wrangler. So the Wrangler um, has some special things about it here, but first let's talk about its gearbox options. You're gonna wanna go with the SnowRunner gearbox because, well, it has the switchable features. You want, always wanna tailor your wheel spin um, to get through those areas. And that's something you're gonna see a lot throughout this review is, when I'm driving, I'm constantly pre-shifting, downshifting, and then upshifting, clutch bumping, all that stuff. So I'm very busy when I drive scouts because if you're not, you're just going to wheel spin yourself into um, a bogged down position and that's never fun. So you definitely want to pay attention to your wheel spin even more so than you do the bigger trucks. Okay, so we'll, talk, we'll come back and talk about this uh, suspension here in a second. Um, winch you always want to go with the autonomous pretty much a no-brainer there and also has the uh the front facing and then has the tall uh facing as well i just chose the tall because it kind of just runs right up the vehicle a little bit taller than the front facing so you can choose either or i, I don't think you're really going to lose on either so now getting back to the suspension unlike its brother it has um two more options than just the ray suspension it has the tune custom and then it has this thing called the crawler suspension and something that's special about this crawler suspension is that it, it actually allows you to retain your balance and the suspension really um, contorts and, and flexes a lot over some uh, rocks and even those harsh areas when it's going over terrain. And something I found is I would just do circles and try to uh, clutch bump and this vehicle would resist tipping over a lot. Um, driving it you have to kind of get used to it because what happens is you'll be driving over stuff and the vehicle will actually rock and sway uh, left to right and it almost seems like you're inducing a flip yet somehow it just kind of holds on and doesn't flip over um, there are times it is deceiving and you will flip over but i think most of the times the balance is pretty trustworthy with this crawler suspension so um, in my opinion I wish the Renegade had this. It would be awesome, uh, but it doesn't. And um, this is a special feature that the Jeep Wrangler has and exclusive to it. So um, overall, the Jeep Wrangler is uh, the superior vehicle when it comes to the Jeeps. But anyways, we are gonna jump over. I'm gonna line this uh, garage up with five more vehicles and we will continue this review. Let's get started. Starting off our second portion of this video, I have five scouts here in my garage lined up. Once again, I have the Hummer 2, the Dawn 71, the Gore by 4, the Con 317 Sentinel, and the Con 39 Marshall for this next five that we're going to review. But overall, um, I've been seeing some trends before I start this the Hummer here. 
Uh, some trends I've been seeing with the Russian scouts is across the board on average, it seems like they have a little less power. Um, they do have better off-roading ability. I wouldn't say as a whole, but they have more vehicles that have the always on features and the always on features. If you have both of those all wheel drive and differential locking always on, you're probably going to get better performance as well and I have and I am seeing a little bit larger tires as well for the Russian scouts so that always helps with off-roading for the North American scouts um, it is kind of showing that they have more power that's going to induce more wheel spin you're gonna have to pay attention more uh, and also some do burn more fuel but that is not an average that is just kind of a sporadic thing some some do some don't and some russian scouts uh, do as well so but i've just been noticing a little bit more with the, the na scouts in that regard anyways let's move forward this is an awesome vehicle right here i have used this vehicle the hummer 2 in my challenge mode where every time i would level up i would go to the next map or the next region and start scouting that and every time i leveled up i would just move maps and this scout did amazing job for me um basically i scouted i think it was the yukon at uh level four and this thing was just a champ um i have a ton of good things to say about it not a lot of bad things it just it has the common things, the common downsides that all scouts have, um, you know, ground clearance, wheel spin, grip, all those things. But let's jump in here and let's talk about it. So the Hummer 2, it gets the Het 8 V6-2 um, or the 6,2 Tango engine. This is 120,000 torque rating, as I mentioned before. Um, it does have 3.9 tons for its weight so it is heavier than all these trucks here on this current lineup um, of scouts that i have currently in my garage that you just saw its tires are 39 inches they do get these hummer tires that you start out with these are actually pretty good to use until you can upgrade so just remember that you are going to need the race suspension though to get those larger tires and also the race suspension does help with ground clearance so you're going to want to have that um, snow runner gearbox pretty much a no-brainer when it comes to having all this power you want to slow things down so you're not just spinning yourself uh, into a rut down to your frame autonomous winch here uh, no-brainer as well you definitely want that second third fourth chance so just, so just stick close to trees like I said before it has the switchable features um, you will have to unlock this um, not too bad there because you find most of your upgrades right there in Alaska for this vehicle. Okay, so now with the spare wheel attachment, there's a couple options you can use and some I think some people might get caught up with equipping this and then not knowing later on that there's a trunk repair supplies um, in, in lieu of the spare wheel. And this is something that I would choose is the trunks uh, trunk repair supplies um, because you get 40 liters that equates to 11 gallons of fuel in your trunk and 150 repair points as well as the same on your small roof rack coupled with four tires opposed to having one tire in your trunk so this is the setup that I would run um, I don't think you'll bust four tires in a trip um, if you do that is impressive <laughs> but um, the total repair points is 300 that's the same as the scout 300 or the scout 800 and the only trucks that have more are trucks like the apache and also the ford f750 so you'll definitely want to have these these setups and forego putting the spare tire in the in the um in the trunk okay some cool things about this truck is very customizable uh with you know headlights all that stuff it does have a, a huge snorkel up front as you can see um, you can put a lot of different things on this vehicle that's what I kind of like it's it's very customizable um, I, I like that a lot and also some things you can do is actually close off the back end and make it look you know just the way you want to put visors on it etc anyways the Hummer 2 is a really really balanced capable Scout it's not tippy I believe it's a wider scout and its balance is pretty good all things considered um, scouts necessarily aren't the the most stable of vehicles there are a few standouts but overall I think this one is probably one of the more stable 
uh, four by four scouts. And also it's just a good, uh, a good one to get, especially in Alaska. I believe you can use this moving forward if you have some patience. So moving on, we're going to talk about the Dawn 71 now. What can I say about the Dawn 71? Well, the Dawn 71 has been a vehicle that has been requested quite a bit on my channel. Um, I don't know if people have just been trolling me about it because it's a very small scout, super light, and just squirrely as ever. So, But it does have some character to it, as we will learn. So let's jump in here and talk about this a little bit more. So the Dawn 71 has the, uh, the KR Custom engine. This 160, it has 72,000 torque rating. It weighs 1.3 tons. This vehicle and the Gore by 4 are the lightest vehicles in the game currently. And as you can see with the S, S um, power to weight being that light, you know that you're going to have issues with wheel spin. And that's why I have this no runner gearbox just to kind of uh, tune down the wheel spin there and then shift into low minus low etc until I have proper um, grip. It gets the tune custom suspension uh, which is awesome because if you didn't have it you'd be stuck with either 28 31 but you definitely want those 35 inches uh, on your tires to get you further out of that mud that you're going to be hitting in this this vehicle. Gets the autonomous winch, no brainer. Use it, please use it. Um, the spare tire, as you can see, the little animation, how it slides to the back like that. Um, here, I'll actually show that one more time. This is kind of a cool little animation I didn't notice before, kind of like as you equip it. This is really cool because some vehicles actually have this mounting on the outside, and this can inhibit attaching a hitch on the back of your vehicle. So sometimes, like vehicles like the, I believe it's the loaf, if you have this on the back, of the vehicle you actually can't attach a trailer so having this inside is pretty nice um, however we're gonna learn it's, it doesn't really matter because of if it's roof rack okay so it has the uh, the tall front facing you're gonna want to put the highest one on definitely for sure um, for the roof rack something that you're going to have to choose here is either the big or small the difference is um, increased fuel so the difference of that is, you know, 11 gallons uh, of fuel there. And that's going to be of your choosing as well as the spare wheels. And you see how there's four spare wheels and you have one in the trunk as well. So you have a ton of them. So if you didn't want to take this, you can just toggle that off. Four spare tires on your roof rack are going to be pretty darn good. And I think so that you actually need uh, the bigger roof rack just because it only has... 12 gallons of fuel equating to 42 liters so having that 40 liters of fuel 11 gallons on top with those 300 repair points which are huge um i think it's needed the vehicle doesn't burn a lot of a lot of fuel but i just think uh, having that range and making the call on whether you want to be safe or you want to have better balance uh, i think you can be both so i think being safe is driving having better balance would basically be you taking this off and, and running around like this but um you do have the strongest feature in this game which is the autonomous winch gives you that second third chance fourth chance even if you need to so just stick close to trees and just be aware that this vehicle is the lightest in the game so whenever you do add this on top of your vehicle you're going to be prone to tipping not so much as the scout 800 because this one's a little bit lower to the ground has a little bit more of a wider gate um so just keep that in mind but anyways this vehicle another thing a huge huge downside about this vehicle is it is so light that whenever you're pulling trailers or even just driving around its front end will not stay on the ground long um, this is where you'll see me in the video um, trying to feather my throttle, trying to get its, my front wheels back on the ground to regain steering capability because that front end just wants to jump up in the air whenever you're going up hills. And this is what really makes it not suitable for hauling any type of trailer. So I do not recommend it. Probably one of the biggest downsides of this vehicle right here. Also, it's very squirrely to drive. 
because of its short wheelbase, it has a lot of power, and also its front end is just super, um, super light. So whenever you hit terrain, it just becomes super bouncy. So just keep those in mind. Anyways, let's move on here to the Gore by 4. So being a stickler of Phase 7 and the whole racing thing, whenever these vehicles came out, this vehicle, the Azov 43191 Sprinter, um, I didn't have good thoughts about these vehicles when they first came out, uh, and that's usually how things go. The same thing about when the croc, the crocodile came out, the step crocodile. I, I wasn't uh, a big fan of it until I actually driven it. The same thing applies here with the Gore by Four. Um, this vehicle is, in my opinion, one of the better small four x four scouts, and um, for reasons I will show you here coming up. Anyways, let's jump in here. It has that same engine, the KR Custom 160. This has a hundred. This has sorry, it has 72,000 torque rating, um, the same as the Dawn 71. It weighs the exact same as the Dawn 71 too, at 1.3 tons. Its tires, however, are a little bit smaller, four inches smaller than the Dawn at 31 inches maxes out. Yet it does have a little bit bigger of a fuel tank at 50 liters, equating to 14 gallons. And then also it has um, some of these repair uh, roof racks that I will show you in a little bit. So as you can see, um, I have the freeway gearbox on this vehicle. And I think this is one of the only vehicles that I will put this on. And I'm going to briefly tell you why here in a minute. but. Other than that, if you don't want to run the freeway gearbox, I believe the um, the SnowRunner is just going to do just fine with you if you're not racing because you can slow things down and allow its tires to just kind of churn through things. And that's kind of why um, this vehicle is so good is just the tires. It does get the race suspension. Uh, you definitely need it to get the 31 inch tires. They definitely are super small tires, um, but you definitely need them. And Coming to the, the highlight of this vehicle, which I believe that makes it so good. There's two things that make makes this vehicle so good, in my opinion. It's the tires and also the balance. Um, it's one of the best balance scouts that I have ever driven. And uh, it's kind of crazy to say, um, for the 4x4s, it is just amazing. Um, doing those racing events, as you can see on screen here, uh, flying down that river, there were times that I really thought I was going to flip over and somehow this vehicle just wanted to get back planted on its wheels. So I'm not sure what they did in the coating and stuff like that, but its balance is amazing. Another thing that's really great about this vehicle is these uh, 31 inch OG1 tires. These actually are better than these mud tire options. So you're going to always want to go with these unless you're in some area where you feel that you need to use chains, then you can use chains freely. But I, however, I think these are the best option. Um, they have better coatings than basically all these Scout tires except for um, you know, guys like the, the TM2 tires that are on the, the Con Marshall and uh, the Yar 87, and also those crazy tires that are on the Tatron. So other than that, these are special tires. I believe they do incredible. So um, moving on here, you get the uh, engageable diff, diff lock, switchable all wheel drive. If this thing had always on features, I would probably rate this up in the S category uh, on my video coming up after this video uh, for the tier list. But however, let's continue. So it has a front facing snorkel, which comes up kind of here on the back, as you can see right here. Um, pretty cool, kind of just blends in, not too high of a snorkel, but um, I don't think you're gonna be doing many river crossings in this thing. Uh, it, I don't think river crossings are definitely uh, scout things to do. Okay, moving on. Um, it has two options for roof racks, and the difference between the two is just one has a spare tire, one doesn't. So you can use a smaller one if you don't think you're going to blow a tire. Um, for me, I'm probably always going to take the safe bet and uh, use the larger one. And that's just, that's just my, my opinion. I kind of talked about that a little bit here previously. The fuel consumption on this thing is pretty darn good considering it is a racing vehicle. Uh, however, 
This vehicle is super hard to drive, to keep in line down the road because it is so light and it has so much power. And once these tires actually find a grip value that it, they're not spinning in mud, it just takes off. And throughout this video, you probably see me just uh, turn inputs left and right, just trying to keep this thing on center. But um, it is a wild ride. Really, really love this truck. But anyways, we got to move on here to the Con 317 Sentinel. Let's get at it. The Con Sentinel was brought out in phase four, a more, and it quickly got overshadowed with vehicles like the Zix 605R. So um, we kind of forgot about this vehicle, especially in regions like Amore where you really can't use this thing to great effect. So it kind of got slid underneath the table and overshadowed by those other trucks in that area just being so darn treacherous. Anyways, moving on here, let's dive in and check this thing out. So the Con Sentinel has the same engine as uh, the Con Marshall. They also share this engine with the Yar 87. This engine has 90,000 torque rating, so it does have a little bit more strength. Uh, the vehicle weighs 2.3 tons. It gets a max tire height of 41 inches with a tuned custom suspension, uh, which gets it really, really good ground clearance uh, for a 4x4 Scout, as you can see. Uh, really, really good. Um, exceptional, actually. Anyways, moving on here. Next has a switchable features, as I mentioned, the autonomous winch, and also gets a front-facing snorkel. Either one's probably going to be okay. Um, this one actually goes up to your roof, so that's what I chose. Uh, another highlight about this vehicle is it actually has 300 repair points as well. Uh, that is a ton of repair points. 300 is, is huge for a Scout, and it also has four tires and also 100 liters equating to 27 gallons of fuel. So it does have 80 gallons or 80 liters uh, equates to 22 gallons in its fuel tank, and it has 100 liters and 27 gallons to fill it back up. So you get a free fill up and a little bit more, giving yourself a, some pretty good range. And this thing does have decent fuel consumption. It's not bad. Uh, I don't think it's too good, but you definitely can have some really good range in this vehicle. It is stable at lower speeds. However, if you get going at faster speeds because scouts are just so hard to keep control of, you are going to flip over because you're just going to be uh, going so fast that you can't compensate with your turn inputs to keep it on balance. So with this vehicle, I do recommend having the SnowRunner gearbox and just slow things down a little bit more. Also, lastly, before we move on here to our fifth and final truck, I just want to mention that this engine sound is rather pathetic. Uh, if, you, if you're an engine sound type of person, I'm not sure if you like this. I don't. Uh, some of these scouts I do like, some of them I don't, but this was just one that kind of stuck out to me. Anyways, this is a pretty balanced vehicle. Um, I think it's pretty darn good because, well, it has uh, really good um, tire options with tire height and it also has really um, really good ground clearance for a scout, the smaller scout. So anyways, moving on here to our fifth and final, we have the Con Marshall. Our fifth and final truck here, the Con Marshall, as I said, has a ton of good things about it, but this vehicle has been around since the game launched and it actually was a vehicle I used a lot because it was just so powerful. And as you can see, it almost looks a little bit like a monster truck because of those huge tires. So we'll get in here and learn a little bit more about it. So it has that engine that is shared with those other trucks, the Con Sentinel and also the Yar 87. It has a ton of engine options. Three of them are in the S class, so you're never going to be starved for power. It has the um, SnowRunner gearbox. This is probably something you're going to want to use. Um, just because of wheel spin. This vehicle does weigh 1.4 tons. It has that 90,000 torque rating engine. These tires can get to 42 inches. However, it doesn't have a raised suspension and it doesn't need it because it its ground clearance is already really good. And it comes with, um, I don't know why I haven't changed this. I will change this now, probably because I haven't been using it. So I just left it on the stock. But anyways, you're gonna wanna use the autonomous winch. No brainer there. Has the, this 
switchable diff lock and also it has always on all wheel drive. I kind of wish this was reversed uh, because of fuel savings because another thing that we need to kind of mention here is the fuel capacity is super, super low. 11 gallons, 40 liters of fuel. That is not a lot of fuel for this vehicle. When this vehicle first came out, I'm not sure what the actual numbers were. I think it might have been a 40 gallon tank or it might have not. Um, I'm not really sure that at this point, but I know its capacity has been nerfed a lot. So I think after that, people just kind of stopped using it because, well, another bad thing is it cannot use trailers. So you can't use a fuel trailer to attach behind you to give you more range, nor does it have chain tires. However, it does have these large 44 inch TM2 tires. These tires are the same tires that are on um, the Yar 87. You're going to want to use these. The crazy thing is these are the only tire option in the game from the start so as soon as you get this vehicle you can attach mud tires and these are some of the best mud tires for um for all the scouts these tires here can actually get you through the devil's mud if you throw throw yourself down in uh, the snow runner gearbox and maybe go at low or low minus and, and just kind of cut your wheel spin down to a point that you can keep forward movement this will actually go through all the big bogs in the game and that that devil's mud out there in the alaska's northport area pretty much is the test of this and for a scout it's quite incredible that you can get this thing in the in the beginning of the game and have such a powerful powerful scout so for snorkel you just have the standard um, snorkel that goes to the top of the roof um, it's kind of blended in here pretty cool sits pretty high this vehicle actually for how tall it sits it has a wide gate and it's actually pretty stable and um, I don't think it ever gets unstable. Only time I feel that its stability is concerning, like I said, with its brother, the one I just previously talked about, um, is faster paces. Faster paces always kind of exacerbates balance, so just keep that one in mind. Now moving on to its roof rack, the, the roof rack has uh, 22 gallons. And this equates to 80 liters so you're gonna get two more fill-ups on this vehicle from its roof rack 150 repair points and four uh, tires as well so also because you have those four tires you don't need to actually put this spare wheel on the back if you don't want to however the vehicle can't need tow trailers anyways so why not just have it on the back just in case if you need to I don't know put a spare tire on a vehicle so you can kind of act as a support role as well. Um, it's a super light vehicle. It is a very, very strong Scout. All things considered, even the nerfs, this thing can basically go through most things in the game. Now, it doesn't have chain tires. That is a big downside for me personally because in some of these regions, you're, with Scouts, you're climbing up those rocky terrain those rocky terrain areas and you're just sliding around like crazy and that's kind of for me a little bit of a downside because in icy areas i'm usually um putting chain tires on so anyways this is an awesome scout and that is the five scouts there for this okay so my apologies i promised five vehicles you're actually going to get three here these are the last three vehicles in the lineup for the 4x4 scouts there will be a separate video covering the 6x6 scouts including the yar 87 the chevrolet apache and also the brand new resvani hercules that is coming out here in phase eight i believe so i'll cover those those are the 6x6 and then the last vehicle i will cover in that video as well is what i call the earth eater and that is the tatron 420 so We'll cover all those in a separate video, but right now we'll jump in here and finish these three out. As you can see here, I have the Caterpillar TH357, and then I have the Tuz 166 and the Con LO4F, also known as the Loaf. So we'll get in here, talk about these, talk about some special things, some good things, some bad things. Let's get started here. Cool. So there are some special things about this telehander. This this is a phase two vehicle that you find actually twice on both maps in 
on the Yukon region. So if you choose to sell it, it's good money. If you don't, you can hold on to it. <clears throat> and actually is pretty capable in some deep conditions. Now it has a engine, the HET4, the HET4 Ace 106KW. This is an exclusive engine to this vehicle. It has 90,000 torque rating. Um, this vehicle can only get it. This vehicle also weighs 6.3 tons US. It is a very heavy vehicle for a Scout. It's one of the heavier vehicles in the Scout class. Now, it gets the advanced special gearbox, and the only other vehicle that I know of that is in the Scout class that gets this gearbox is the Tatran 420. The Resvani um, Hercules might get it. Um, that's to be determined, hasn't been released yet, so that's something that I ha might have to backtrack on later. It doesn't get a race suspension, it is a Caterpillar. Um, none of them really get race suspensions. They come as they are. You can't change the colors, etc. I kind of like it to be honest. Now for these tires, these are a 51 inch tire. These are one of the larger tires in the Scout class. Um, 51 inches is huge even for the uh, big truck. So it can definitely move through some things. And these tires have a different coating than the other Scout class tires. Um, their dirt rating is 1.7 and the mud rating is actually 3.0, beating the TM2, which is the tires on the Yar 87 and also the Con Marshall. Um, the only other vehicles that actually beat this rating or other tires that beat this rating would be the MSH2 that get 3.2 mud rating and then also those specialized tires of the, the Pacific trucks and also the Caterpillar 77G gets as well. And then lastly, the insane tires that the Tatran 420 gets and we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm not gonna go into that right now. It's great that it gets the autonomous winch as well. Um, the only two add-ons that it can get here are the handler fork and the wide handler. These are just for straight up loading stuff. I have seen people actually load logs with this thing. It is very hard to use um, with this, but this is really the only two add-ons that you really do get in this vehicle. So that's kind of sad. Its fuel capacity is uh, 110 liters that equates to 30 gallons of fuel um, as you can see its power to weight is only a B its fuel consumption is actually really good and it also has it's always on differential locking and always on all-wheel drive so you do get some pretty good performance in this vehicle however I don't think this vehicle is very powerful now when i say that before i didn't think scouts had power issues this is really the only truck that i see that has to downshift on a regular basis and sometimes you really do have to actually put it in a lower gear setting to get it to go up hills there was a couple time i was stalling in in high gear and that was just not something i expected here in uh the scouts so just keep that in mind you might have to switch down to lower gears um, but something really cool about this vehicle, it turns with all of its axles. Um, this is really cool because I've spoken about this with rear steer vehicles before. Whenever you start to jar yourself off balance, you can really cut your tire and, and turn into um, something to regain your balance, either turning uphill or turning downhill swiftly just to get your, your vehicle in a different direction or going with the, uh, the momentum of your vehicle. So you can really save yourself with this steering okay so there's nothing really that special about this other than those things but that is the telehandler th357 sweet so now we're going to move on to the tuz 166 upon looking at the tuz 166 you might not think it's that capable in off-road scenarios because well it looks like a little car uh, on some big wheels but there's some really good things about this vehicle and I think it's actually one of the sleeper vehicles in this class and we're gonna jump in, talk about it right now. So the Tuz 166, it just got this new uh, KR custom engine, shares with uh, vehicles like the next one in line here, um, but this engine has 72,000 torque rating. It weighs 1.7 tons, so it is one of the lighter vehicles in its class. However, it does have some awesome things to combat that, like the always-on all-wheel drive and always-on differential locking, which is really nice for off-roading. Another thing I have to mention about this vehicle is it gets all these gearbox options and the specialized, exclusive, archaic gearbox. Now, this only gives you 
um, three gears, one low gear, and that is it. However, I love the efficiency of this gearbox um, coupled with the custom 160 engine. As you can see, its fuel consumption sticks at S. Um, its fuel capacity is only 60 liters at 16 gallons and its roof rack only, only covers 40 liters and 11 gallons, which uh, is rather small. Also has four spare wheels on it. No repair um, add-ons in here, sadly, but still, with that gearbox, I've been able to see this thing go for a long distance. Its range is really, really good with this archaic gearbox. If you can handle it hard downshifting and not have it having to uh, upshift to high gear all the time just to kind of keep your wheels turning, I do recommend using this because of its fuel capacity being so low. I think you'll get some of the best fuel uh, consumption uh, in these classes. It's just amazing how little fuel this thing burns and how great it does uh, in the off-road category. Now it's tires, they're not huge, uh, but for its size, it is a smaller Scout. It does get 39 inches and it also gets the tuned custom suspension, which is kind of needed. You see how far it gets off the ground. It gets pretty good ground clearance and this vehicle is actually really stable for a Scout. This was something that really confused me, especially with a small roof rack and it kind of being um, a smaller Scout. Usually I would expect it to kind of be a little bit tippy there, but however, this thing holds on pretty darn well. Uh, very respectable. Autonomous winch, must have as all, as all times. Um, you have the front facing snorkel, goes up to the top. Um, but yes, overall, the Tuz 166, I believe it is a sleeper in the Scout class. Uh, its performance definitely ranks um, among the highest, I think, for the 4x4s with those always on features, even though it lacks weight. Um, that always on features in the archaic gearbox just make this thing really, really good to go uh, long distances. And as you can see in the video, it's just crushing through the mud in Tamir uh, without hesitation. So that is a Tuz 166. Very surprising uh, scout there, and I, I definitely like it. So now we're going to move on to the Con LO4F, which is the Loaf. One of the oddest and most um, surprising vehicles in the game is the Con Loaf here. Uh, this vehicle, as when you look at it in the garage, you wouldn't think that is actually that good of a vehicle just because, well, it's a van. It looks like it's about to go get some groceries, but let it not deceive you. This thing is one of the better scouts in its class. And we're going to dive in, talk about some cool things here. So as you can see, it gets the KR Custom engine. This is a brand new engine. I believe it came out in phase four, shares it with all those other trucks. This brings its power up to B plus before. Its power actually was in the C range, wasn't really that good. Uh, still, its performance with these engines here was still actually pretty decent. And then this one just bumped it up and gave it that uh, increased power, which was always helpful. Um, Personally, I like to use a SnowRunner gearbox for this thing. However, you probably can get away with using the freeway because of the always-on features. This is another Russian Scout that has the always-on features, so um, you're going to get better performance outside of those low gears. So you can either choose these two for this and most likely get away with it because this thing is oddly very stable, and I will talk about that a little bit later. Gets the race suspension option. You're going to want that to have bump up its tires because if not you're going to be stuck with 30 inch tires gets a full tire options that most scouts get even up the chains as well the autonomous winch is a must for any scout now something i must mention here about this spare wheel you see how i don't even have it selected like this i don't even have it as a, a times one do not do this because if you do you're going to roll out and you cannot attach a trailer because this will inhibit attaching trailers. This is one of those scouts that you really have to be mindful of. So you don't really need it because its roof rack actually gives you 120 uh, liters of fuel that equates to 32 gallons, 300 repair points, which is massive. And also you get four tires on the top. So you're never really going to need that extra tire in the back as well. It does have 80 liters of fuel equates to 22 gallons. As I said before, has the always on features. And um, some things about this vehicle that I absolutely love. There's not really some bad things. There's not really a ton of bad things other than it has small tires. Um, its ground clearance isn't the best. It's decent with the, the race suspension option. However, 
Something that is really odd about this vehicle is it sways left and right, but somehow it, it oddly sticks to its wheels or finds its way back to its wheels relatively easy. Um, I can't really explain it. When you drive it or even from seeing this video, it's like doing this acrobatic dance all the time, yet it stays on its wheels. It's one of those vehicles that, you know, if you're a bad driver, it's very, very forgiving. So, um, can't say enough good things about this vehicle. It's very deceiving, especially when you look at it, you wouldn't think it's a, a good off-roader, but it actually is one of the better scouts in its class. So anyways, guys, that is my review for all the 4x4 scouts. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this gave you a fresh new perspective on these scouts. Uh, next time, you'll probably see me do some, either the Western Star Trucks review that just came out, or the 6x6 scouts and then probably following will be the actual scout tier uh, tier list so be uh be ready for those hope you guys have enjoyed this and as always god bless and stay upright